In this video, we're going to continue our discussion about frequency distribution tables. Um, in the previous video, we came up with this frequency distribution table. And in this video, we're going to talk about two different columns that you can include in your frequency distribution table. Um, so we had discussed how to calculate class limits. So now we're going to discuss how to calculate class boundaries and class midpoints. Um, the point of calculating class boundaries and class midpoints mostly has to do with, um, in the next video, we'll talk about um, making constructing histograms, which are uh, you know, these, these graphs. Um, and these, these graphs use class boundaries or class midpoints um, as their x-axis. So uh, for class limits is mostly um, a convenience um, you know, calculating class limits is mostly for convenience so that you can easily uh, find the frequencies. Um, but class boundaries or class midpoints are, are used in uh, plotting histograms. Right. So what, what's going on here? Uh, let's first, let's talk about class boundaries. So um, if you were to consider on a number line, so uh, here is 0, um, 1, 2, 3, 4, Five, six, seven, eight. I'm actually going to extend my number line. Go ahead and erase that arrow there. So, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I'll go all the way up to 15. Okay, so um, what I've done with class limits thus far is, so from 0 to 2, okay, so 0 to 2, and we've calculated that there are 8 observations between 0 and 2. And then from 3 to 5, we've calculated that there's 5 observations between 3 and 5, uh, 6 to 8, 9 to 11, 12 to 14. All right, so what class boundary says is like, uh, it's, it's not a good idea to have these gaps between two and three. Uh, not a good idea to have this gap between five and six. And why is it not a good idea? Well, because uh, you know technically the number of hours that you spend exercising per week is a continuous measurement. And so, um, you know, we shouldn't really be having any gaps between, um, you know, our, um, between our classes. So no gap between this two and a three. What if someone, you know, enters, uh, they exercised 2.5, uh, you know, they, they would not fit anywhere in these class limits, right? So class boundaries just gets rid of those gaps. So to do that, we basically, we calculate the number that's between two and three, and this, this becomes a boundary here. And the number that's going to be between five and six, that'll be a boundary. Uh, so we'll have, well, actually, we'll have to go a little further behind zero because class is kind of obsessive about being exactly the same width, right? You notice that the, all these are the same width, they're width of two. Uh, well, actually, the class width is, is three because you calculate the class width by looking at um, you know, the, the lower limits, right? So the class width is three. Um, you, know, you still want the class width here to still be, to still be three, okay, so three units. So all of them have to be three. All right, so let's see. All right, let's see, I'll have another one here. All right, and lastly, the last one will have to go up a little bit further. All right, all right, so where, where is this one? Well, so here is, here's negative one. So it's basically, it's halfway between zero and negative one, which would be negative point five until it got to halfway between two and three is 2.5, right? All right, then uh, let's see, where's, where's, this, where's this class? This is one, I guess it started at 2.5. And it goes until, let's see, where does it stop there? It stops uh, halfway between five and six, which would be 5.5. Uh, Okay. Now, if you can't tell that that halfway between 5 and 6 is 5.5, you know, finding the 
between, you know, the number that's between two numbers, there's a formula for that. You just take the two numbers you're trying to find the, the middle number for, you add them up. So, so say between two and three, you add them up, so that'd be five, and then divide it by two. So five divided by two is 2.5, right? Uh, 11, so this would be five plus six is 11. 11 divided by two is 5.5. Um, Okay, what's between 8 and 9? Well, uh, that would be seven, 17 divided by 2, which is 8.5, right? So this, la this, this bin here goes from 5.5 until 8.5. Okay, this, um, this bin here goes from 8.5 to, that's an 11 to 12, so 11.5. 8.5 to 11.5. All right, lastly, this one goes from, uh, let's see, 11.5 until halfway between 14 and 15, so that'd be 14.5. Okay, 14.5. All right, so now, um, so, so that's how you calculate class boundaries. So you can choose to use that for your histogram, right? And we'll talk about drawing histograms using class boundaries in the next video. Um, so now let's go ahead and calculate uh, the class midpoints. How do you calculate class midpoints? Well, class midpoints is just, it's the middle, it's the point that's in the middle of the, um, of, of the class limits or the class boundaries. It doesn't matter which one you use. Uh, the point that's in the middle of the class, okay? So uh, in the middle of the class, you could do uh, what's the point that's between 0 and 2, right? Or what's the point that's between negative 0.5 and 2.5? It's the same number. You'll get 1, right? 1 is halfway between um, 0 and 2 and negative 0.5 and 2.5, right? Um, remember, you can always calculate what's the number between by adding up the, the bounds and dividing it by 2, right? So you can add up z um, 0 plus 2, 0 plus 2 is 2 divided by 2, and that's 1, right? Or negative 2.5 plus 2.5, that's 2 divided by 1, divided by 2 is 1. Okay, halfway between 3 and 4, I mean, sorry, 3 and 5, halfway between 3 and 5, that'll be 4. Okay, halfway between six and eight, be seven. Halfway between nine and eleven, it's ten. Halfway between twelve and fourteen is thirteen. Okay, so that's how you calculate class boundaries and class midpoints.